Hello, my friends, and thank you for joining me today. I am so thrilled to be here, and I'm excited to talk about one of the fiercest deities that we will ever have the pleasure of getting to know, and that is the Morrigan. But first, I've got to ask, how is everyone dealing with Mercury retrograde thus far? I know it's just begun, but let me tell you, first thing in the morning, on the first day of Mercury retrograde, I went into work and the damn phones were down. This happens every goddamn retrograde. To the point, it's not even a cute joke anymore. I could set my watch by it. Our whole network was down, in fact. And then um, that evening, my husband came home complaining that the Wi-Fi was down where he works all day. And my dudes, that's just how it goes. When Mercury goes retrograde, technology and communication shit the bed. I will give the same advice that I give every Mercury retrograde. Anytime Mercury is acting a fool, and that is avoid signing contracts if you can. If you can't avoid it, make sure you read everything carefully. Avoid getting into arguments if you can. If you can't, try to avoid saying anything you can't take back. Communication in general breaks down like a goddamn 86 Pontiac Fiero. In other words, communication is unreliable at this time. People will say things they don't mean. People will misinterpret things. So proofread your emails watch what you say. Let's just ride this out for the next few weeks. And the other thing that's happening right now is that we're in Virgo season. Happy birthday, Virgo. For the rest of us, this is a really good time to lean into all of the positive attributes of Virgo. This is an excellent time to get our affairs in order to put a new routine in place, to clean out our metaphorical closets, and just get it together. Virgo is detail-oriented. Virgo appreciates organization. Virgo sees our highest potential and gives us the tools and the motivation to live up to our own promise. So let's not waste this opportunity to refine ourselves. Let's not waste this chance to begin establishing some expectations for ourselves during this season when those expectations are going to be well supported. If there was ever a time to put a little pressure on ourselves to start something new, start something that we know will benefit us and help us, it's Virgo season. And look, people can talk all the shit they want about how Virgo can be hypercritical and that is something to be mindful of, but we know when we aren't living up to our own potential and Virgo is not going to co-sign our bullshit. Virgo is going to tell us to get off our asses and do the things we should be doing. So let's... All listen to that little nagging voice at the back of our minds that we know damn good and well has our best interests at heart. And let's stop pretending like escapism and laziness are the same thing as self-care. There is a fine line there, but if we are honest with ourselves, we know the difference. All right, that's the end of my sermon. Um, I do have one teensy bit of housekeeping to address before we get to the main event, and that is this. I had to turn off my DMs on social media for the time being. Um, I am still available um, via email at eli at middleagedwitch.com, but it is just too hard to keep track of all of the messages when they're spread across so many different platforms. So in the interest of staying organized, please email me all you want. Um, It's just much easier to stay on top of things through email. So I do appreciate your understanding. And now let's talk about the more again. Now we have done a few episodes on deities and deity worship. 
and we have done special episodes for Hecate and um, Aphrodite. I loved giving so much attention to those goddesses. Um, They are two that I happen to work with regularly, and I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I have learned more and grown more as a witch and as a woman and as a human being thanks to their teachings. But lately, um, I have felt inclined, um, prompted, if you will, to talk about the Morrigan. And look, if you're not someone who works with deities, that's fair. But just hear me out because you know you might hear something that you need to hear or learn something you need to learn. And if you're a witch who has felt compelled to learn about the Morrigan, you know, if you've felt like maybe she's been trying to get your attention, then hell, maybe that's the reason I'm feeling called to talk about her today. I don't always know why I pick the topics that I do, but you know, then I'll get an email from someone who tells me that a particular subject was exactly aligned with some circumstances in their lives. Or, you know, they just happened to be listening to an episode and, you know, this was just as some situation was unfolding and it gave them some clarity. So maybe... I'm talking about the Morrigan today because she wants your attention. Who knows? She's crafty like that. So let's start by talking about her history and her background a little bit first. Um, The Morrigan is a figure from Irish mythology. Um, She's a triple goddess, a goddess of war, um, battle, death, destruction, among many other things. In fact, the Morrigan is a variation of a phrase meaning great goddess or phantom goddess. And as with most mythological uh, figures, there are a lot of origin stories. Who knows what's true, what's not, what's embellished. Um, But some of the early, earliest appearances of the Morrigan come from the 8th century, which is like a really long time ago. Um, But as I said a moment ago, she is considered a triple goddess, but not necessarily in the same way that we consider like Hecate or Brigid to be a triple goddess. The Morrigan does not generally represent an maiden mother and crone. She is almost always associated with the crone not because she's an old woman in all of these depictions, but because of her associations with death and the underworld. Now, when we say that the Morgan is a triple goddess, it's because she is frequently depicted as three sisters. Um, But they're also kind of the same person. So like, think of it sort of like the Christian Trinity. She is three personages, but she is also one. And frankly, sometimes she is only one. There's not a whole lot of consistency um, across all of these depictions. And I, frankly, am of the mind that she is mostly considered a triple goddess simply because of the Celtic obsession with threeness. You know, the number three was incredibly significant to them. So the Morrigan became sort of wrapped up in that significance but of much greater significance to us is what the Morrigan was known to have done for those ancient Irish. She was said to go into battle with soldiers, um, to occasionally fight alongside those that she considered to be especially worthy. She was also said to appear to those who would die on the battlefield, those who were destined to die. She was basically foretelling their deaths. Um, And this is why it's thought that Um, she is sometimes associated with the Banshee. Um, She was also said to carry those who had fallen in battle over to the other side so that they didn't have to make that journey alone. Um, But she isn't only concerned with war and battle and death. She is considered a patron of the land and of animals, especially livestock. And In this way, she is a guardian goddess, you know, here to teach us how to be good stewards of the environment 
and to help us make the land prosperous. Um, this is also why she is occasionally known as a fertility goddess. You know, we can hardly think of livestock and growing seasons without making the logical leap to fertility. But she has so many facets. The Morrigan is a triple goddess. Goddess of war, battle, death, destruction, but vengeance, hexes. She's also a goddess of courage and defense and empowerment and messages and omens and prophecy and protection and shamanic work. The Morrigan is a goddess of witches, much in the same way Hecate is. But something that we must remember when we feel her call or seek us out is this. The lessons that the Morrigan has to teach us are never gentle. To me, the Morrigan is like the tower card in tarot. We cannot advance to the next stage. We cannot move to the next level in our relationships, in our careers, in our spiritual journey, in our lives in general, without first tearing down those old structures and then rebuilding. And that's the same message that the tarot card gives us, the tower card in tarot. And that is not gentle work. This requires hard work mental fortitude. It requires us to let go of false ideals and false ideas of what stability is and what it means. The Morrigan is going to get us out of our comfort zone. There is no two ways about it. If we want to work with the Morrigan, if we want to ascend to the next level, we're gonna have to be prepared to have our disillusions ripped away. Whatever truths that we cling to, whatever little white lies we tell ourselves, whatever comfortable ruts that we've gotten ourselves into, all of this is going to be upended. The Morrigan promises to make us stronger. Throughout this process, she promises that we won't have to walk this journey alone, but she also does promise that we will have to walk it. There's no way of getting around it. So the question must be asked. What lies have you been telling yourself? What decision have you been putting off making? What big change have you been resisting? What is it that you are so afraid of? And are you ready to face it? Even if that means getting really, really uncomfortable. Even if it means making big adjustments in your life and in your routine. And look, I can't answer that for anyone but myself. But I can say, if you've been feeling pulled, if you've been feeling prompted to investigate the Morrigan as a patron deity, if you've been curious about her, if you've been seeing crows or black dogs or black horses or wolves, then maybe it's time to ask yourself, what big scary changes have you been resisting? Maybe you're hearing this because she put me in your ear to tell you that she sees you and she sees that you're not living up to your potential and she has a plan to help you get the hell out of your comfort zone and into your higher capacity. I don't typically get this intense. I know that. But the Morrigan is nothing if not intense. So now, let's talk a little bit about how we can make the move to introduce ourselves. Let's talk about how we can approach her. And this is the same essentially as we would with any deity. Start with making a little space for her on your altar. Put out some offerings or tributes in this space that are specifically for the Morrigan. Put some water on your altar for her, maybe some wine or even some gin, because the Morrigan is associated with juniper. And as we mentioned last week when we talked about potions, 
gin is chock full of juniper berries. Um, otherwise, you know, some oak branches or acorns or even just a picture of her that you've printed off the internet. Create this space for her. Meditate with her. Light a candle. Light some incense. Invite her to speak with you. Invite her to give you some impressions. Ask point blank what it is that you need to address in your life. Well, let's be honest here. If you're considering working with the Morrigan, you probably already know good and well what it is that you need to change in your life because the Morrigan is not here to babysit us and coddle us. She's here to kick our asses out of the boat to see if we're going to sink or swim. But if we are willing to learn to swim, she absolutely will teach us. She won't do it for us, but she will stay with us every step of the way. It will hurt, and we will probably want to quit sometimes, but whatever it is that we need to face, she will stand with us. She will walk through the fire with us. And when we come out the other side, we will be stronger. We will be braver. We will have more confidence, and we will be ready to take those lessons forward. This is what the Morrigan offers, not comfort, but strength, tough love. And this is what's so fearsome about her. And it's also why she's so special. God, I, I don't know. I, I hope that this has resonated. I hope I haven't alienated anyone. You know, but sometimes the message isn't cute. Sometimes it's this. So that's the Morrigan. She's intense. She's... A hellion. She shakes things up. And sometimes we need to be shaken up. So have a lovely day and a lovely weekend. Please stay vigilant this Mercury retrograde. Let's all get to the other side. Enjoy Virgo season. This is a great time to have heck, uh, the Morgan come and kick your ass. Um, thank you again for being here with me today. Um, it's been lovely. My name is Eli Rowe, and this has been the Middle-Aged Witch Podcast.